If you don't know what ChatGPT is, basically a bunch of neurons with biases and activation levels are connected together by weights. The weights and biases are fine-tuned using large amounts of test data, usually from the internet, until a neural network is developed which can take a text input and predict the next word in a conversation. This process of predicting the next word in a conversation is done repeatedly until a machine can generate a response. Then when you give it billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of neurons, you get ChatGPT. Okay, how many R's are in strawberry? The word strawberry contains two R's. Wow, well done guys. $3.4 billion in revenue and that's what you come up with. But how come ChatGPT can easily explain quantum physics to you, but it struggles with a basic counting exercise? What many people forget is that large language models like ChatGPT aren't actually thinking before they speak. Instead, they work by predicting the next word in the conversation again and again and again until they generate a response. This is why it can often seem very intelligent but also make very silly mistakes. This is how all AI chatbots used to work until one day someone at OpenAI came up with an idea. Oh, I know. What if we get the AI to evaluate its own answer, then think about it and refine it before outputting it to the user? What? Unfortunately, all we've been told is that unlike previous models, OpenAI's O1 questions its responses and then refines it before returning it to the user. But most people who use ChatGPT on a regular basis know that it's unlikely you'll get a perfect response first time round. So you'll find yourself giving multiple prompts just to get one single desired outcome. Well, not only is this process now done automatically, O1, much like a human, now has a train of thought. In this video, I'll be explaining how I think it actually does this, but bear in mind that this is pure speculation and I'll probably get it completely wrong and end up starting an argument in the comments section. It's likely done by breaking down a problem into a series of sub-problems, which is known as decomposition. For example, if I ask it to write me a script for the Minecraft movie, instead of just blursing out the next words in the conversation, the AI takes its time to break this big problem down into a series of more manageable sub-problems. How do we structure the movie? What characters do we have? What are the overarching themes? Then the AI can create many different solutions to each of these sub-problems and using a set of predefined questions or parameters, somehow identify the quality of each solution. Now we can pick the best solutions, compile them together, critique and refine them using algorithms which are designed to detect and correct errors and flaws, and boom, you have your response. This new method seemed to make the AI more intelligent. When tested on human benchmarks and exams, it improved in every field. It also managed to beat expert humans with PhDs in science when answering science questions. On the 2024 AIME exams, gpt 4 o only solved on average 12% of the problems O1 averaged 74% with a single sample per problem, 83% with consensus among 64 samples, and 93% when re-ranking 1,000 samples with a learned scoring function. A score of 13.9 places it among the top 500 students nationally and above the cutoff for the USA Mathematical Olympiad. Two weeks ago, if you said to me, I'm smarter than AI, then you might be right. But today, if you wanted to be smarter than AI, then you would literally have to be a mathematical Olympiad, have a PhD in physics, chemistry, and biology, and speak like 20 languages. But I bet an AI can't throw hands, can it? What are we gonna do? 